Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my quilting room. So, today we're gonna discuss some very important things. <laughs> First of all, uh, my apologies for not uploading a lot this past week. I have had kind of a busy, very busy week um, and I will share with you what has happened. So, um, my dad's birthday was last week on the 26th of January. As you know, my father passed away on my birthday in April last year. And for some reason, um, it really got to me this year on his birthday. So, um, I wasn't really, I was in, I'll be honest, I was in a pretty deep depression honestly and i just needed to take some time to kind of just do me and reflect <laughs> so um that's what i did and then um yesterday my mom got hacked um uh, on her computer so what I want to tell you is to be very, very, very careful of these people that are out there doing that because um, it's really scary. And of course, she was very, very upset. And so was I. Um, but I want to put out there that if that happens to you and you get a notification on your computer telling you that you need to call a phone number that it's a scam um you should call somebody else and like a son or a daughter or anybody that you trust and you should have them help you and walk you through that process because this one popped up on her computer from a reputable company and she called it and thank goodness she didn't give out any of her information but they were trying, they were trying to get it. So to make a long story short, everything is fine. Everything got taken care of. Um, so we're, she's doing fine now. Um, but boy, it was a, it was a roller coaster of a ride. <laughs> so as you can imagine, um, I don't know if you saw what I did on Monday. Uh, my niece is getting married, uh, in April. And so I embroidered her bridal robe for her and it turned out beautiful. She is going to have a kind of, it's a formal slash kind of a Western wedding. And so um, she wanted a cowboy hat with a cowboy boot on the back of her, her robe. And so I went ahead and embroidered that for her. And I have pictures on my Instagram, but I'll put some in here too, just so you can see them. Um, there's one that has a different color thread that isn't her wedding colors. It's got a blues and whites and pinks in it. Um, and she really liked that one, but it didn't match her colors. So I went ahead and used that robe as a practice piece and went ahead and put that design there to make sure that I had the right stabilizers and everything. And lucky for me, I did and it's stitched out beautifully. So she's gonna use that for her, um, what am I trying to say here? Her wedding shadow box that she's gonna make. So um, that's, that's what she's up to there. And then I have been playing with my long arm machine. If you don't know already, I got the Handy Quilter Simply 16. And I wanna thank you all for all of your congratulations, wishes, and everything. I have seen them and I will get to them and start answering some of your questions. I've just been really, really in a slump and then very, very busy. So um, I'm looking straight at it. I'm kind of frustrated. Okay, so I wanna talk about long arm machines. <laughs> Before you purchase one, um, you should go to a long arm dealer that's near you or take a trip into town and go to your local sewing shop that, that sells them. And you're gonna wanna test them out, first of all. Um, I 
absolutely love my machine and I did test it out before I bought it. And mine was actually a previously loved machine, which I'm totally fine with. Um, all my brother and my Janomis are also pre-loved machines. So, and they work great. Um, so anyway, what I have found out in just owning one for the short period of time that I've had it. Um, it takes time to learn how to load a quilt onto your, your frame. You have to remember how to do it. And there's several different ways to do it. So <laughs> you have to find the way that works for you and that makes sense to you. Um, so that is number one that I have found to be kind of a, a learning curve with that. Um, secondly, I like to go faster than the machine. So it gets mad and beeps at me every time I'm going and I go faster than my stitch regulator. Um, I love the stitch regulator because it keeps my stitches nice and even. So that works out great. And then I bought a bunch of accessories for my machine. Now, Handy Quilter has a lot of accessories for your machine. Um, and so when I found that out, I was on their website looking at stuff then I started realizing oh I need this and I need this and I need this um you don't really need those things but it's nice to have them so I will tell you what you do want for sure when you buy a long arm machine um depending on which machine you get some machines come with some of these things and some don't so mine did not um so I bought a light kit for mine and I put the lights underneath the throat of my machine so that I have more light and I can see better. I did purchase the back handles with the laser. Um, what that does is it enables you to be able to um, do pant pantographs, I think is what it's called. Um, pantographs, which is this. It's a piece of paper. I haven't even opened this yet. Um, but it is a piece of paper and you can put it, tape it down onto your, the back of your table. If you get the studio table, now again, it depends on what kind of frame you get. So mine is the studio too, but you can see this design here. Okay. So you would tape this down onto the back of your table and you will trace those lines with your laser on the back of your handlebars and that quilts the design onto your fabric so i do think that that is really an important thing to have it just gives you more options other than the free motion now you can buy the uh robotics for this machine i did not do that yet i am trying to learn the machine first before i jump into that and also um I'm gonna open it up once I get comfortable and start doing quilts. I'm gonna actually offer that as a service. So, um, but I I need to learn how to do it first. I, I'm just not there yet. So, and it's, it's a learning curve. So you gotta give yourself a little bit of grace and some time to learn. Um, but I do love it. It is so nice because you can quilt a quilt much faster, trust me, much faster. It is it is fabulous. Um, I love that my um, frame came with the batting bar because I can store my batting under there. One of the other things that I purchased that I think is very, very important is Handy Quilter has a net that you can put on your machine. And what that does is it holds the um, batting off, keeps it up off of your floor while you're quilting so that you're not picking up dust and hairs and whatnot. And you know I have a dog, and so you know his hair is, his hair is everywhere. Even though I, you know, vacuum all the time, it's it's still there. So um, if you get a quilt from me, it's gonna have a little bit of fur baby love in it, okay? Because <laughs> it's got Jack's hair. I am finding what my machine likes and does not like though thread-wise. And I'm also finding what I don't like thread-wise. So um, I've used some variegated cotton thread to kind of practice with. 
and I am finding that I don't really care for cotton thread for quilting with my long arm because it is so linty and um, and the tension doesn't seem to be as easy to adjust for me as it does with a polyester thread. So, um, but I'm still practicing with that. Um, figuring out tension on a long arm machine is a little tedious sometimes. Um, and you just have to do it little by bit, bit by bit is what I'm trying to say. And, um, and that goes for your top and your bottom tension. Um, and you will have to adjust it each time that you use a different thread. So if you are looking at getting a long arm, these are things that you need to, to think about. And when you go to the store and you're talking to the, um, the customer service rep and they're, you know, ask them as many questions as you possibly, your machine that you're looking at. Ask them if they do these certain things that are important to you because it is very important. Ask them what kind of feet come with the machine, you know, and does it do ruler quilting and how much is extra is that and this and that and the other thing because there's a lot of extra add-ons. So I have the ruler foot and I have some rulers and I have the ruler table. And those were extra. Um, I bought a glide foot, uh, which looks like a little bowl and I really like that foot. I like it better than just the regular quilting foot on there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, channel locks. I did talk about that a little bit. You definitely want to get channel locks if your machine does not come with them. Um, on my machine, what it does is it enables it to lock it so that I can actually stitch horizontally or I can stitch vertically and stitch down the edges of my quilt by basting them. Um, so that's... Uh, that's really an important thing. Unless you can sew a straight line. If you can just sew a straight line, and then you're good to go. Um, I like to use a stitch length of four or five when I'm basting the quilt. And then my regular stitch that I like to use is about a 13. So, you know, and then of course you're controlling the speed as you're quilting along and, and whatnot. So um, I do really, I really like it. There's just a lot to learn, a lot to learn. And I've been playing with it most of today. So <laughs> it's been, I'm pretty tired now. It does, it takes some um, upper body strength and getting used to being upright and holding onto your handlebars and moving them around and stuff, if, you know, cause you're not used to that motion. Um, and the best way to practice your free motion quilting, honestly, is just on some scrap paper that you may have, or if you have a notebook and you can just get in there and just practice, you know, your loops and your straight up and down and all of that. That's what I like to do to test my tension is I make loops and then I do like mountains, big mountains. Um, and... Yeah, so that's really, really it. Um, advancing the quilt um, is, I'm getting better. And groovy boards are awesome. So when I saw that they had those, I had to get them. And what it is, is you have to buy the kit for the groovy board, but um, it's a stylus and it hooks onto your machine and fits in and you can adjust the height to it and whatnot um, but what it does is it fits into these little tracks um, that are called groovy boards and you can quilt that actual design onto your quilt so I am actually going to flip the camera and show you exactly what I'm talking about so that you can see oh, this is the groovy design that I have stitched onto my quilt here. And again, I am still learning. I'm trying to learn how to line up my design so that it'll be continuous from the top down to the next row. Um, but this is one of my cool designs here. And this is, it's an actual rose is what it is, but this is the groovy board. 
And then this is what the groovy board looks like. And you can see that it has the little grooves in there that that stylus, let me see if I can zoom in on the stylus. There's the stylus right there. You move it in and it drops down into the board and you trace it on from the back of these handles here. And you are able to make that design. Um, once I start getting a little bit better at it and I really understand more, then I can start teaching you how to how I do things on it. Also, this was like my practice piece, my very first practice piece. And I did free motion. This is all my free motion stuff right here. Um, I want to show you though the tension, what I'm talking about. So this actually had some good tension on it before. And you can see I didn't really know what I was doing when I first started it. Um, so this is the back and that is what the tension looked like. So it looks pretty good, right? But then, look at this. And no matter how hard I tried to correct that tension, um, it just would not correct for me. And then I finally rethreaded and did this and tightened my tension again, and then it worked. So <clears throat> it does happen. And so if you get one and this is happening to you, it's pretty normal, you know? Um, you just have to work with it until it's not doing that. So anyway, that is all I have for today. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. If you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Click that little bell. You get notified each and every time I upload an awesomely cool new video. And keep on crafting. I'll see you guys next time.